Hello and welcome to this lecture on hyperparameter tuning. There are some reasons for tuning the parameters. The first one is covering the training and the inference time. So depending on the parameters you're choosing, you could end up with some very long training time or some very long inference time. Then another reason might be that you just want to improve your results because the hyperparameters are very much impacting the performance. And the last one is touching on the convergence, because if you have wrong parameters, it might be that you end up with exploding or vanishing gradients and your model is just not being able to learn correctly. Let's assume there is a need to perform hyperparameter tuning. And then the question is, how can you actually do that? The intuition is that you want to check multiple combinations of parameters and then in the end just pick the best one. There are also certain packages that you can use. Here are just name some like Raytune, Optuna and Scorch. The last one is what we are going to use in our coding lecture. And then there are a bunch of different hyperparameters. I tried to categorize them into different classes. So the first class would be the network topology. If you want to change the topology of your network, you could change the number of nodes, you could change the layer types, the activation functions, everything that is defined in your model class. Then there are some other network objects, like the loss function or the optimizer, which you could change or which have some parameters themselves that could be optimized. And then during the model training, there are also some other parameters like the learning rate, the batch size we spoke about earlier, or the number of epochs. So all of these could be modified and much more. Let's touch on some of them. Let's recap the batch size. So here you can see the problem. You could pass your data set completely into a model, which might not be possible. So due to that, it might be a good idea to have a small batch size. So using a small number of data sets and putting these small bytes to the model or using some larger batch size and then putting these larger bytes to the model. So here are some advantages and disadvantages. So for the GPU utilization, if you have a GPU, then it's advantages to use some larger batch size. Of course, the number of iterations is going up if you have very small batch sizes. But smaller batch sizes have also shown to improve the stability of your training. So the, here you can see already there are some reasons to use smaller values and other reasons to use larger values. So it might be complicated. And the best practice here is to use a batch size of 32 to start with. The next hyperparameter I want to touch on is the number of epochs. So here you can see you have two different options. You could have a low number of epochs or a very high number of epochs. And this, of course, is impacting your training time because the higher the number of epochs, the longer the training time. On the inference time, that doesn't have an impact. But it does have also an impact on the model performance. The model performance is poor if your number of epochs is too small. Typically, it's better to have a larger number of epochs, but there is also some limit because at some point it just doesn't make sense to increase the number of epochs anymore. And also you might end up with some stability problems if you are having a too large number of epochs. The next point is covering the number of hidden layers. So there could be just a very small number of hidden layers. Like you can see here, we have an input layer a hidden layer and an output layer. 
And here is the opposite side where you have a number of different hidden layers. And for the ability to learn complex patterns, it's necessary and essential to have many hidden layers. So for this, it's better to have more layers. But then, of course, it's having an impact on the training time. It takes, of course, longer if you have more layers and thus more nodes. Also, it's having the same impact on the inference time. So when you deploy your model, it's also taking longer if you have more layers included. And there is also this risk of overfitting. So if your model is getting too complex, it might be that the model is just memorizing the observations and this might reduce the generalization of your model. The next hyperparameter I want to touch on is the nodes within a layer. So you could have a hidden layer with just a few nodes, but you could also have the opposite, a hidden layer with many nodes. And it's similar to before. We have the same pattern here. If you need to have a model which is able to learn complex patterns, then it's necessary to have more nodes in your hidden layers. So if you have more layers, then this is good in the case that you need to have the ability to learn complex patterns, but it has a negative impact on the training time and the inference time, because these ones are getting up. And also having fewer nodes might be beneficial because the risk of overfitting is decreased. So these first point and the last point, these are always creating some tension because, because if your model is too simple for the problem, then it's not able to learn the complex patterns. But the opposite might be that your model is too complex for the problem and then you are risking to get overfitting. So how can you actually create some structured search? There are different approaches. The first one is called grid search. In this approach, you need to at first define your search space. So you need to define a set of parameters with some limiting values. And then you are basically evaluating all possible combinations. So in a case where we are saying we want to make some grid search based on the learning rate and the batch size, here you can see we have two different values for the learning rate and three for the batch size. Then you can expand the matrix and create all the different runs. So basically all possible combinations of both parameters. And this approach of grid search is very well for checking well-known parameters. There is also random search. In this approach, you would pick randomly a point from your configuration space. And that might be better for the discovery of well-working parameter combinations. I want to make you aware of one package that I found to work very well. And that is also what we are going to use in our coding section that is called Scorch. That's a scikit-learn compatible neural network library that wraps PyTorch. Here you can see where to find the repo. And this can be integrated into your sklearn pipeline. And it also provides some grid search functionality. And this is actually what we are going to code now in the upcoming coding lecture. Thank you and see you there.